Hey everybody. Today we're talking about logistic regression in R. Remember, logistic regression is a technique for modeling the outcome of a binary variable on the, on the basis of some explainers that could be quantitative or qualitative. In this vid, we're going to stick with the most simple case where we have a single quantitative explainer. I'm looking at the admissions data set that I talked about in my last video, which was just about logistic regression generally. I'll throw a link to that one up top if you are not too familiar with logistic regression or just want to understand it a little better, I recommend watching that one. Here we have 2,100 entries. Each one of these represents a student that applied to a certain college. We have their grade point average on a scale from uh, 0 to 4, and then um, a binary response variable, 0 or 1, indicating whether or not they were admitted. In this case, zero means that they were not, and one means that they were. Let's start with a plot to see what that looks like. Um, by the way, I've already loaded up Tidyverse, set my theme to minimal so I don't have to deal with R's default gray background, with, with ggplot's default gray background. I've loaded up the admissions data set and, of course, opened it in the viewer. I will make sure that that admissions data set, which um, I created by simulation, I'll make sure that's available on my GitHub page and the link will be down in the comments. Okay, so I'm doing a ggplot using that admission set. GPA is gonna go on my x-axis, that's the quantitative explanatory variable, and admitted, the binary response variable, is gonna go on the y-axis. I'm doing a jitter plot with a little bit of transparency because there's gonna be a lot of overplotting here. So let's take a look at this. There it is. Okay, so as you would expect, you see that um, there are a few people that got in with low GPAs. Maybe they had great records in other, way, other, other ways. And um, there's a few people that had high GPAs that didn't get in. Maybe they were, um, had other problems. But in general, as GPA increases, the probability of getting in also increases. What we would like to do is to fit a logistic model so that for every GPA value in this range, we're able to give an approximate probability for the individual getting accepted. We'd ex expect to have low probabilities for the lower GPA values, high probabilities for the high GPA values. So um, let's go ahead and get this. We're gonna save our model as model. I'm not gonna be too creative about that name. The basic command we need is GLM, Generalized Linear Model. And this is a much more general function. It works for more than just logistic regression. We're gonna stick to logistic regression here. The syntax I'm going to use is going to be very reminiscent of the lm command that I've talked about in lots of other videos when you're doing um, just linear regression. So we want to put our response variable, in this case it's admitted, and then a tilde, and then the explanatory variable, in this case GPA. We need to say where those variables are located, in this case it's the admissions data set. But we need one additional argument. The generalized linear model command um, can, as I said, be very general. Here we have to specify specifically the sort of um, response variable we have. The argument that we need here is family equals binomial. There's other optional arguments. I won't get into those at all here. We can get the summary on that model just as we could with a linear regression model. Let's go ahead and see that. Make that a little bit more visible for you all. Okay, so again, we have an output that looks relatively similar to our output for our linear regression model. I want to highlight these two numbers right here. We have an intercept term and then a GPA coefficient. So um, obviously negative 12 and about 4. Let's take a second and um, look at a slide that talks about what exactly those mean. And this is modified only slightly from the slide I used in my video explaining logistic regression more generally. So um, the model that we're talking about looks like this. Logit of p equals b0 plus b1 of x. So we're taking a logit transformation, and I have a whole video on the logit transform. I'll put a, a link to that one up top. Of the probability is equal to um, basically a linear model here on the right. So beta0 and beta1 are unknown coefficients that are estimated using data. These are done with ma maximum likelihood estimation. We aren't going to do any of that math. You should never do any of that math by hand. <laughs> That's what R is for. The logit function is invertible. If you apply the inverse to both sides of that above equation, you can write that model in a different form. P equals um, that sort of fraction with exponential functions that I have on the right. And so the output of that R model that we were looking at a second ago specifically says B0 is about negative 12 and B1 is about 4.0, 4.1. 4 
So um, if you plug these in here, you can literally get the equation that's being plotted here, uh, um, of, get the equation of the logistic model that would go on top of this plot. We could do that by hand, but of course there's a better way. Let's let R do it for us. I'm gonna copy and paste my ggplot command. And I'm going to add a, uh, a geom smooth. And of course, I need a method. If you're doing a linear regression, you do method equals LM. Here, it's method equals <laughs> GLM. But of course, that's not quite going to do it right now. Remember, for our generalized linear model, we had to specify another argument. I'll copy and paste that. Um, because you could add, um, you could pass more than one argument potentially to the GLM function here. We have to say family equals binomial inside of a list. And the syntax here is a little bit awkward, but I think it's no more awkward than is necessary. It's method.args equals list parenthesis family equals binomial. Make sure I've got the right number of parentheses here. So I'm um, specifically saying, hey R, when you apply the generalized linear model function, please pass this argument to it. So. I also, while I'm at it, is going, I'm going to remove the standard error ribbon. In general, I think that uh, muddies the plot instead of making it more clear. And I did something wrong. Um, Method.args. There we go. Not arg. There we go. And you can see now the characteristic logistic regression curve placed on top of that binary data. I want to do one other thing, because frequently you won't have data that's all just zeros and ones, binary data. Oftentimes you'll have proportions, um, either probabilities of success for different x values or proportions of observed successes for different x values. So let's do a little bit with that. I think what I'll do is use the same data and uh, I'm gonna do maybe ADM sum as the name of my new data set. And I'm gonna take admissions and oops, oh, you don't need to see any of that, sorry. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pipe it into a group by. I'm going to group by GPA, and then I'll summarize to get a new data frame. And I want, uh, how about prop ADM, proportion admitted, is going to be the mean of admitted, admitted. And then let's do count equals uh, just N, just the number. And I think we can just print that out. Let's just look at that. Okay, so what has happened here is for every value of GPA, and in this case, GPA goes in increments of 0.1 from two up to four, uh, R has just literally computed the proportion that were admitted with each of those GPAs. And things are nice and clean here because this is simulated data. I've made 100 observations for each GPA level, and you can see they're generally increasing, although there are some exceptions. We can get a plot on this as well. Let's go ahead and get that. Um, so it's ADM sum, which you have to spell correctly. On the x-axis, I still have GPA, GPA. On the y-axis, it's prop ADM. And I want a geom point again. This time I don't need any sort of jitter or anything because um, there's only gonna be one point for every x value. Let's see how that looks. All right, so here you can see that characteristic S shape. For smaller GPAs, lower proportions of, six, of admitted students. For higher GPAs, higher proportions of accepted students. Let's make another model using this. Same syntax, basically. GLM. This time uh, I'm modeling prop ADM with GPA. The family is going to be, quote, binomial. The data is this time going to be ADM sum for summary. But I'm going to need one more command here. So R doesn't know without being told that all of these proportions have equal weight. So in this case, there are 100 students with each one of those GPAs. For real world data, that's not going to be the case. And so what I need here is um, weights, G H T S, and I have to let R know where within the bino where within the ADM sum data set to find the weightings here. And that here in this case is in the count column. And 
second GPA, not GPS. I thought I fixed that, but I guess not. And if we get the summary of model two, it's going to look exactly the same as the summary of our initial model. We'll print that out a little more nicely. There it is. And you can see exactly the same regression coefficients as before. The last thing that we should be able to do here is to actually add the regression curve using a ggplot and a geomsmooth. So let's wrap up the video by getting that. I'll make a little bit more space here. All right, so it's a ggplot. Actually, you know what? I'm going to start just by copying and pasting what I've got. OK, so um, of course, I'm going to want the geomsmooth with a method equals glm and se equals false and um, a method dot args. That's a list and family equals make this visible quote binomial. And uh, I think if I hit enter now, it's going to work, but I'll get a warning message. Let's see here. Yeah, so it works, but you see um, non integer number of successes. I haven't told R where to find those weightings. And in this particular case, because the weightings are all the same, 100 students per GPA level because it's simulated data, it ends up not mattering. It doesn't throw off the fit. However, in general, that's not going to be the case. So what I need to do here in order to um, resolve that mathematical issue and also get rid of that ugly warning is to add an aesthetic. And uh, what I need is weight equals count. And so again, remember count is the name of the column in my data set that actually has the, um, the weightings. So this won't change the way the plot is viewed, but it will remove that ugly warning sign. <laughs> there you go. That's how you can lay that um, lovely logistic curve over the proportions data.